Yeah, uh, my name's Tony Scalzo, and I sing, and I play bass, and uh, uh, the other guys in the band uh, are Joey, the drummer, and uh, Miles, the guitar player, and he also sings. Well, if if you want to do an interview with Fastball, uh, the first thing you think of is uh, is the way, of course, because that was the first really, really, really big hit of your band, not in, not only in America but also in Europe. Can you tell something uh, about the things you felt, the, the things that happened a few years ago when you brought out that single? Well, I didn't have any idea that it was going to be as successful a song as it's become. Back then, we were so busy running around and going from different places to different places supporting that album that once uh, it, it took me to be separated from all the pandemonium of that song until I realized that it was actually, you know, it's just a, just a massive song. And it, it also uh, made me realize that the band really still has a long way to go in regards to getting recognized you know for for us and for our band and for the the idea that we can you know do all kinds of material and we got lots of songs and uh you know it's almost like the song overshadows the band and a lot of people don't know who it is a fastball song <laughs> i wrote the damn thing and a lot of people think it's like some old song or something you know it's very strange i've heard it in I've heard it walking down the streets in Milan. I've heard it in Mexico City on the radio. I've heard it in Finland. It was like number one for for months. Not all the songs are, are songs that are the like of The Way. So Fastball is, is a lot more than The Way. And how do you get that across to other people? Except for the fact that the record company well, has got to do some work. Yeah, the record company in the States has, got, has already put out four singles. The, the Way being the first of them. Um, and that was number one in alternative for a while. And then we we actually made a top 20 single with uh, Fire Escape. And that was followed by Out of My Head. So off that album, we had three singles. And uh, Out of My Head has almost the same sort of quality to it. But people don't know that Out of My Head is the same band that did The Way. But they still don't know that it's fastball. You know, it's just the same predicament. Uh well, you know what? Radio in the States tends to um, take singles and just push the songs. It's about the songs for them, really. And, you know, they don't know... Uh, unless you go over there and play some, uh, you know, acoustic sets or something for them live, you know, and get to know the people, they they don't know you any better than the fans. They are not the fans. The fans are the songs, I guess, you know. You know what I think is great about Fastball is that you you all write songs separately and then it still sounds as a real band. So it's not like uh, you have like three kinds of songs on an album and then... Right. The cohesiveness remains? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what I think. Um, yeah, I think it comes from just playing together for so long and, and you know, knowing each other really well. And I think that uh, once you start playing with people for, for any period of time, your, your, your own personal material is going to be affected by the others. You know, so naturally this cohesiveness you know takes root yeah because it's i think it's only natural because you can't really predict or, or say in front like okay well we're gonna write songs yeah. but it has to sound like i've never been able to just like say you know we've never we've never been able to together me and miles go all right let's do this let's let's write this song and here's here's a chord progression and blah 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 it just never works out that way what kind of what kind of feeling or thinking do you have with uh, with the new album? Because uh, it's been done for for quite a while. I think now it's it's out ever since uh, a few weeks. I think in here in Holland. Um, what kind of feeling do you have with the album? Um, I think that at least like seventy five percent of the material on that record of the songs could be could be something that you could hear on the radio and and go, wow, I like that song. Who is that? I honestly believe that. And, you know, this is also coming from a guy who only wrote, you know, five songs on this record. I think the band, the band is is just really playing well together and we and it shows in the, in the recording of this record. Plus, 
um, we did a really good job of adding musicians and help and getting other people's talents and pooling it into our thing, you know, and concentrating on it, all that stuff on one energy, um, all that energy on, I mean, one, one thing, you know, one focal point. And, uh, I think that e even in doing that, we we tried to do what was appropriate for each song individually rather than, wow, let's get a horn section in here and have them play on five songs. You know, uh, what we did rather was uh, much more involved and obviously much more expensive is to, you know, we have pretty much a separate setup for every song. In one song, for example, Love is Expensive and Free, which I hope you'll play because it's, it's, it's to me, it's my favorite song on the record. Did you write it? Or? I did, actually. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's got Brian Setzer playing guitar on it. It's got this fantastic mariachi orchestra led by this guy, Jose Hernandez. Jose Hernandez in Los Angeles. And uh, he's a top draw himself, you know. Uh, it's, he can fill up a thousand seat rooms. and yeah. You know, he does very well. And he, he plays on uh, various artists' uh you know, work. Mm -hmm. So, and there's there's orchestra on some other songs, but those are that's a different. You know, that's a that's actually a sim symphonic orchestra. It's, it's yeah. people from the the Los Angeles Symphony. A um, couple of guest people, keyboard players. Uh, Billy Preston plays on this single, "You're an Ocean." He plays the piano on it, and uh, he came in and basically did his thing in a, in about an hour and a half. Did it about five or six times and left, and we just spliced it all together. But just you know, he did exactly what I envisioned uh, envisaged he'd do. Yeah, that that usually means that you really know what the guy is doing, what right. the guy oh, has yeah. been doing. Well, yeah, I I knew when they said Billy Preston, I was like, when when Julian Raymond, our producer, had suggested him, I went, wow. So various people play on it. There's a lot of guest artists. But getting back to that. The idea of the guest artist is to, you know, if our philosophy on this whole record was we have the money, we have the support of the label, and we have a little bit of time. We've actually spent, you know, three times longer on this record than anything we've ever done. We're usually in and out within a month to do a record. We spent about three and a half months on this one. Um, but that's, you know, that's pre-production included and, and mixing and all. Yeah, and you have some more time to think about stuff yes get a little bit more involved in the thing so that it doesn't pass you by and you realize wait this could have been done so much better you know we really really took the time and wanted to get it right and I hope that it doesn't take away I mean you know I, I hear I am doubting my own stuff but uh, I hope that it doesn't take away from any you know soul you know, I hope no soul or or feeling is lost due to the, you know, looking at it too closely or whatever, analyzing it too much. Yeah, should you as an as an artist, should you really if you're finished and if it's if it's been pressed on an uh, on a CD record, should you really really uh listen to it like Well, you know, it it might get depressing because you know what? I've actually improved on a lot of the stuff that I do on the songs due to playing live and and supporting this record for the last two months. Um, and I, if I look back on the, on the record and I listen to the record, I realize, God, I do it so much better now. So in that sense, it can be a little bit sobering. But... Uh, well, if if you look at it positively, it still uh, means you're growing. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. It's, it's nice, actually. Uh, but I've listened to our first album, Make Your Mom, Mama Proud, Make Your Mama Proud, and uh, realized that's a pretty good record. It's, you know, uh, after we did the last one, we were thinking, wow, this is so much better than our first album. And we got this, this thought in our heads that maybe it wasn't a good record. Well, you know, I took about a year off of listening to that record, and I listened to it for the first time in a long time, and I was like, wow, this is, a, this is not half bad. But that's also what a lot of fans do. We just put put an album that's a few years old to the side, and then after a year they think, "Fuck, maybe we should listen to that album again." And right. then think, "Well, it's it's probably a great album." Yeah, well, we call material for our set a lot of times now from you know the first album because 
uh, it just has a lot of energy in those songs. And it's, it's power pop. Okay, well, thanks a lot. Uh, and I think we'll see you guys around over here because uh, this is a promising album for Europe, I think. Well, thanks. I hope that's, that's true.